Jack the Ripper, the most brutal serial killer in history. He covered the mouth, exposed the throat, cut them twice, left to right. One, two. Savage, sadistic. Poor lady was gutted like an animal. He's gotten away with murder for over a hundred years. Now, one of America's greatest cold case investigators has reopened the file. For any detective, this is truly the holy grail. Uncovering a trail of new evidence that leads him right here. The hunt for Jack the Ripper starts in an unusual place. New York City. I've seen people with their heads cut off and put in other people's laps. I've seen infants thrown down garbage chutes. People buried alive. I've seen some of the most gruesome stuff you can imagine. Ed Norris is an investigator who spent his whole life solving horrific crimes. In 24 years of being a cop, you see everything. It's a nasty business, but solving these unsolvable crimes is what makes me tick. Veteran homicide detective, founder of the NYPD's Cold Case Squad. He solved his first 27 murders in just six weeks. Now he's facing an even tougher challenge, a 125-year-old cold case. It's one of the most shocking cases, not just in New York City's history, but in American history. In 1891, prostitute Carrie Brown was murdered on Manhattan's Lower East Side. The neighborhood was one of the roughest areas in New York City at the time of the killing. And as you can see, in over 100 years, not changed a lot for the better. You do not want to be walking around here by yourself at night. A century ago, prostitutes openly worked the bars here. Among them, 56-year-old Carrie Brown, a failed actress the locals called Old Shakespeare. So this is the spot. A little over 100 years ago, this is where Carrie Brown was murdered. 11 p.m., April 23rd, 1891. Carrie Brown takes a customer back to a flea bag hotel that stood on this corner. The East River Hotel. It was a rundown brothel on a street of rundown brothels. Back then, it's a quarter for the room, 50 cents a trick. But on this night, a stranger will put Carrie Brown out of business for good. The case is never solved. The only clue the killer leaves is his uniquely disturbed method of murder. It makes me sick to think that someone got away with murder on my streets even 100 years later. I want to find the guy that did this and expose him. There's no forensics, no witnesses. All Ed has to crack this case is a 125-year-old paper trail. I reviewed hundreds of cold cases, and the first thing you do in every cold case is pull a case folder and read it. New York's Municipal Archives. Whatever is left of the Kerry Brown file is here. This is the death certificates for New York County at the time. As she is, Carrie Brown, 1891. Carrie Brown was an English immigrant. After the death of her husband, poverty forced her into prostitution. And this is the intact photo of, a, of the woman that was horribly murdered. I, I just, it always it gets me uh, emotionally when I used to investigate these. You try to keep yourself professional and distant, but whenever I'd walk into a murder scene and there were photos on the, the dresser or whatever of the people with their families, it just really, really gets there. When the body is discovered, the local coroner is called in to survey the carnage. These images of the murder were taken at the time. They are so shocking that we can't show you them in their entirety. This is how she ends up. These look like mortuary photos. If she was alive during this, she was tortured. If she was dead, she was mutilated. And it's just, uh, nobody should go like this. Nobody. According to the autopsy, the murderer had a three-stage M.O. Strangulation, ripping open the body, and astonishingly, scattering the entrails on the bed. I've seen prostitutes mutilated, but I've not seen cases like this. It's a very unique method of operating. This poor lady was gutted like an animal. 
Oh, wow. Amazing. The coroner's report sent the press wild. They jumped to an extraordinary conclusion. A British serial killer was on the loose in New York. The leap was made that this was the work of Jack the Ripper. Amazing. Was this just press hysteria or even a copycat killer? Could the Ripper have traveled 3,000 miles across the Atlantic from his old killing ground? In 1891, Jack the Ripper was the world's most famous killer. He had terrorized London in a series of hideous and highly distinctive murders. To an expert eye, every serial killer has a signature. With Jack the Ripper, it's as good as his fingerprint. His victims were always prostitutes. He strangled and cut the throat, ripped open the body, removed their entrails, just like the New York victim, Carrie Brown. If I were investigating both murders at the same time in the same city, I'd be looking, same victim, same type victim anyway, same MO, same signature, to me, same guy. The obvious question is, could Jack the Ripper have come to New York City? The key in all cold cases is finding the clues missed by the original investigators. You often need to re-examine the basic evidence. It's amazing what a fresh pair of eyes can do for a case. Ed wants a new take on the old autopsy. Did the investigators miss anything at the time? He hasn't just been killed. Once he's killed her, he's continued to work on her body to do things to her after her death, to open her up. I mean, he basically he's torn her apart and played with her. Dr. Jonathan Hayes, Manhattan's senior medical examiner, has examined thousands of murder victims. He shows Ed a vital detail. This doesn't look like an accidental injury. I mean, the, the two limbs of the X are approximately the same length, and it's a very neat, yeah. clearly cut X. So I think that looks like a deliberately inflicted injury. A little like a marking or something. Yes. Yeah. For some reason, he wants to leave this Exactly. This I don't mark. know the significance of the X. The X can be very significant. A lot of serial killers like to leave their marks. They'll do something at the crime scene, they'll mark the victim, they'll have unique methods of operation, you know, MOs. And they want the attention, they crave it, and sometimes it gets them caught. The old files have yielded another detail that's caught Ed's expert eye. Incredible. A letter to the NYPD with a sinister warning. You think that Jack the Ripper is in England, but he's not. I'm right here. The next thing you will hear of some woman dead, yours truly, Jack the Ripper. Jack didn't write the letter after the murder of Carrie Brown. But before. Was the Ripper in New York watching all the while, waiting to strike again? Is Carrie Brown the clue that will finally reveal his identity? The Carrie Brown murder has never been solved. If you solve the Carrie Brown murder, you may actually solve the Jack the Ripper killings. Cold case investigator Ed Norris is on the hunt for the infamous serial killer, Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper is the ultimate serial killer. He's one of the worst killers in the history of the world. And for any detective, this is truly the holy grail. Ed's search takes him to London, the Ripper's killing ground. London's Whitechapel. In the late 19th century, it's the seediest slum in Britain. Squalid, overrun, and difficult to patrol. You can still find the back alleys and courtyards where the Ripper used to hide. It's like amazing here. Yeah. It'd be impossible to find anybody. In the fall of 1888, Jack the Ripper stalked these streets. In just 10 weeks, he butchered at least five prostitutes.